Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. Now, some of you, I hope more of you, all of you should be joining me on the Haydn Symphony Crusade. We're having such a good time. We're in the middle 40s now. We're about to do the Farewell Symphony, which is going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that because I'm doing that, I, I, I haven't been spending as much time as I really probably want to talking about Haydn's other stuff, particularly symphony recordings. So Dave's Faves is going to give me a chance to talk about some of my absolute favorite Haydn symphony recordings. And and here is here is one of them, which I just think is fantastic. It's numbers 82, The Bear, 88, which is one of the glories of musical history, without a doubt, and 95, the only minor key London symphony, the least popular one, because it's not tragic. But these are fantastic performances with the Heidelberger Symphoniker under Thomas Fye. Now, he was doing, you know what happened, it's a tragic story, what happened with Thomas Fye. He was doing all of the, all of the Haydn symphonies, and he, he fell down a flight of stairs in his home, and and sustained a career-ending injury. Let's just put it that way. He's alive, fortunately, but, but he can't conduct anymore. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was feeling kind of, you know, of two minds about it. I, mean, I felt terrible that he was injured. I did. But the, the Haydn cycle was going off the rails at the time that his injury happened. It began like gangbusters like this. You know, Faye was a pupil of Harnoncourt. These are not on period instruments, but they're period instrument style with, you know, minimal vibrato and fast tempos and slashing articulation, yada, 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 right? Okay. But they were really, really good. They began that way. But then as it went on, he, he became more rigid, more mechanical, just less less interesting sounding and more predictable in what he was doing. And it was really a terrible shame. Now, the cycle is going to continue with somebody else. Um, it's already, I think maybe the first couple are already out or they've been announced, I've seen them. But uh, the best of what he did was really, really superb in the modern Haydn style. And this is really exceptional, especially for number 88, because I am a major Haydn Symphony number 88 connoisseur. I always, I mean, this was the piece that, one of the pieces that just turned me on to classical music. It blew my mind when I first heard it. The first recording I heard was Fritz Reiner in Chicago, which is quite good, but actually I, I outgrew it, actually. It was not my favorite for very long, but when I first heard it, it just absolutely rocked my world, especially the trio of the minuet, which is that delicious country scene with bagpipes. It was the piece of music, and I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, the piece of music that taught me that music speaks to me, speaks to us. It paints a picture. It describes a scene. It's a language. It can say anything it wants. And it was that trio with its bagpipes and its pastoral scene. I knew exactly what it was. And I was like six. And I heard it. Because I had bagpipes then. I was, had a toy bagpipes and I played around with them. But I, I knew immediately what he was doing. And it just, it, the idea that music without words could do that, I, I still find it amazing. How did I know? How do any of us know what a piece of music is saying to us? But it does, and it does it with unbelievable specificity sometimes. And then there were just those amazing tunes in the outer movements. Oh my goodness. Dum bum ba da 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 you know. <clears throat> Let me do it right. Bum bum ba da. Hmm. I can't get into the right key. It's in G major, and I don't know what key I'm in, and never mind. The finale. There we go. You see, I had to just get, I just had to get it to fall into it, right? That's, it's just a, a fabulously exciting performance. 
brilliant and colorful by turns. Then there's the bear. And the bear is the first of the Paris symphonies. And it's called a bear because it also has bagpipes. It has a drone bass in the finale. Foam, 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 like that. Foam. You know, it's, it's supposed to be a dancing bear. I mean, who cares? But uh, another brilliant, brilliant piece of music. The first movement is this militant piece as Haydn ever wrote. It's incredible. And number 95. Now, number 95 has a lot going for it. The only thing it doesn't have going for it is that it's in C minor, and after Beethoven's fifth, everyone expected things like that to end tragically. And Haydn, as usual, begins with stern counterpoint and ends with comedy, pure comedy. And one of the most beautiful finales he ever wrote. It has a gorgeous, gorgeous tune. You know the tune, right? Oh, it's just amazing. Absolutely beautiful. And then it becomes as dazzling a contrapuntal exercise as you will hear this side of Mozart's Jupiter Symphony. It's, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, it's kind of cool because if the not terribly tragic opening movement is considered by some to be a letdown, the piece only gets better as it goes. I mean, the finale is just a knockout. So all is forgiven. But these are terrific performances, and they're wonderfully recorded. And it's terribly sad what happened to Phi, but at least we have these that represent the best of his work in Haydn, and we can savor them to this moment. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.